Nonsense podcast, a show where the only god we worship is Patty Lapone. I am Cat Gold. I am Michael Matter Domini. Episode seven. Here we are. One episode for every day of the week. We can just go ahead, put on episode one on a Monday, and finish up with seven on a Sunday. We wrapping this thing. Please don't say that. This takes a lot of editing on my part. That is not <laughs> happening. <laughs> but just today- kidding. Every Monday's people. Oh, God. Today, we have a very special guest. This is a person we have been talking about since before we even recorded our first episode. We were like, we have to get this person on. I met this lovely individual in 2016, working together on my first professional show ever. And he still likes me, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) I met this, this wonderful human being. Uh, doing my first show at Slow Burn uh, during Mary Poppins. I saw his tall ass enter the room, and I was like, mm, I'm going to be best friends with him. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Jarrell Brown. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. We are oh, so excited. All ours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cry. Don't, don't. Literally, Michael's been hard <laughs> be on this podcast. It's L- crazy. Like, I was really honored when you guys gave me the invite. I was like, um, absolutely. You're like, oh my goodness, these two idiots want to hang out with me on Zoom? <laughs> I love it. And I love podcasts. It's fun. It is definitely like, especially like while we're in between shows, like when we have time between, this is like such a fun, chaotic way for us to stay in the industry without like, going crazy with self tapes you know (laughs) true that yeah instead of like like we said instead of memorizing lines and doing the shit that's really important we just sit by our phones and go ahead and talk to our friends (laughs) actors access or editing a podcast with spotify Hmm, i wonder which one's more important for our careers i got a little triggered when you say actors access (laughs) <laughs> I don't blame you. Every time, every time I get an email and it's like C mail, da 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 from I, insert any casting office, I'm I'm immediately just like ball like the pit of my stomach. I'm like, oh Jesus fucking Christ, do I have to go to the city again? I can't, <laughs> I can't handle this. I can't. Now, <sighs> speaking of being all over the place, Jarrell, tell tell us what you, what you've been doing because you left South Florida for a little bit recently. Oh my goodness, yes, I did. I went to New Jersey. Hey. I was at good old Sit Slack's Great Adventure. Oh, that's nice. I saw you. Conjuring House and everything. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was very interesting. That was a gig. I would have been absolutely terrified if I saw Jarrell come out of nowhere and throw his starfish right in my face. I think that would be <laughs> the only thing that would be absolutely horrifying about that maze. No, what was funny was like, people always turned a corner and there was like a hallway and people would turn the corner and they would just see me and they were like who's that <laughs> like they just see me standing there in my priest collar and they're like who, what is he doing and they'd be like father save me <laughs> and i would just walk into the basement where all the action is and by that moment people wouldn't want to go in the basement because they're like "Uh uh-uh I'm not following him (laughs) he scares me (laughs) I guess to kind of like get things started so how exactly we want the origin story of Jarrell Brown how exactly did you get into the arts well actually my family was the artist you know household that I lived in My dad um, is a painter, and he's done a lot of murals and paintings around South Florida for as long as I can remember. And my brother, he played the flute. (laughs) And my mother, she was this poet writer. So I remember in elementary school, I was in choir um, at my church for a bit. And then when I got to my fifth grade, 
year I went to Tamarack Elementary and I was in the choir. I was in the sign language choir doing I Can Go the Distance yes. and I played the <laughs> violin. And after that, I went to West Pine Middle School and I was in choir at that point in choir in church still. And then by the time I got into high school, I was like, I was all choired out. I was like, yeah. no more. <laughs> No more. <laughs> Terrell's not about no more tall vowels. We're over it. <laughs> tall vowels for a tall person. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> but um, I always wanted to be an actor. I've always wanted to do TV film. Like that was like my itch. And when I got to high school, I remember I was like, "Oh my gosh, I wanted to, you know, take these classes, TV production, and things like that." But it was more on the production side and not in front of the camera. And I was just like, that's a bummer. And one of my friends was just like, hey, um, we're having auditions for the drama club. Like, you should, like, sign up. And I already had seen the drama club um, perform, you know, in-house assembly. They mm-hmm. did, like... Um, I want to say Hamlet in 15 minutes. Yeah. And it was like the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. And I was just like, okay, like these kids got it. So mm-hmm. I did my first production of Guys and Dolls in high school and I got the theater bug. There you Who'd go. you play in Guys and Dolls? Because we have a nice little relationship with that show over here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, I know I was one of the the gangsters. I I honestly couldn't tell you. I just remember I had like this teal turquoise suit. It sounds about right. Gangster. <laughs> listen, listen, guys and dolls is a blur to us, and we pretty recently did it. It's still just a blur. Like we've kind of semi erased it from our memory. You know, one of those crazy names. Harry the Horse or Big Jewels. One of them. Please, I don't even please, <laughs> please tell me you were Harry the Horse with <laughs> our, our very own Harry the Horse over here. Honestly, it was not. It, I was oh, not, but I remember God. the I guy who away. Did. Oh my goodness. The, the only thing that I really remember uh, about Guys and Dolls is uh, bringing up this man again, Sean Davis, when he had to stick his finger in his ear to say, Saiba! And he ripped it out during rehearsal and this huge ass chunk of earwax came out with it. <laughs> and we all lost our mind. So Sean Davis, gotcha, buddy. Welcome to episode seven. We have to mention Sean Davis in every episode um, uh, because he, he'll go onto our YouTube page and only comment the timestamps that we mention him in. <laughs> and he got a little bit upset with episode two because we didn't mention him. So now we have like <laughs> he was like there was no there was Sean no Davis. favorite part of this ep- he's a good one. He's a good one. Oh my goodness. Mm. But that must have been so cool growing up in a household with like so many artists. That must have been such a supportive like place to like to be to like continue with this. Mm. But you know like in high school and I was like I'm going to go major in theater. My parents were like they're going to what? <laughs> I think that's the that only was... response. <laughs> just shock and horror. <laughs> like, like I me? thought this was just like an after school activity, you know. I was like, <laughs> no, I want to do this. They're like, okay, good luck. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't I don't think I I yeah, no, no, I I, I get it. My my little Filipino mother was like horrified. And I was like, I'm not going to study medicine. I'm going into musical theater. She was like, absolutely fucking not. <laughs> so like, I get it. Um, so, so you went to you went to school for theater, but like, what did you study specifically? So, I went to the University of South Florida. Ooh, okay. And I was getting my degree in theater performance there. Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. they actually like they got me got me because like when I was like my first choice was FSU Mm -hmm. it's like oh they had a you know they had a banging program back in the day yeah and my second choice was UCF 
and then by that point like UCF they just was like no they were just like full they were like full, yeah. full to the mats so then USF mm-hmm. they were like you know we do musicals over here like we you know though it's not a musical theater degree we do theater performance like we do musicals mm-hmm. and I was like okay and like I got there and I was like when's the musical and they were like <laughs> we do musicals every four years and we just did our last musical last year I was like ah oh. so I would have thrown up <laughs> yeah so I was like I have to wait my senior year for a musical absolutely not <laughs> Yeah, it was it was too wild for me, but I end up leaving. So, mm. hey, join the boat, join the club. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh man, we are living examples that you can make it in this profession without a BFA program at the moment. Okay, you go for a couple years and then you dip. <laughs> the thing is, when I was at USF, um. I was like involved in other things. Like I was doing African dance classes at the time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, these weren't, this wasn't like a credited class or anything, but I was like doing that. I was part of one of the um, dance groups there. (laughs) And like my, I really wanted to work at Bush Gardens um, because they had this one show at the time called Katanga and it was all African dancing. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I want to be in this show. And I worked at Bush Gardens, but I worked at Sahara snacks serving chicken tenders and fries. But like the goal was to get to Katanga. Yeah. Like, to go ahead and I'm shake them it. thighs. <laughs> you got to run, you got to bring it around. Jarrell, do you have any and awful like, stories from working at that chicken tender stand? Yeah, the, the park in general. Um, It was just, like, mostly, like, my supervisor. Like, she was, like, one of the reasons, like, I I was like, you know what? I, I, I'm not going to deal with this. Like, because it was, you know, Bush Gardens was, like, this zoo in a sense like yeah you don't have everything you know like lids and straws and stuff like that so people would just get very angsty about those things they'd be like can i get a lid you know can i get a straw like sorry but for the sake (laughs) of the animals you know but my supervisor was like basically the one i really couldn't deal with and i was like i don't have to deal with this and i like quit and like went back the next day like as a guest with comp tickets and like walk by <laughs> say hi that's, that's the way to do it <laughs> just like a middle finger as you walk by smiling hey <laughs> <laughs> take your lids and your straws and shove it <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like blocked by like Anheuser Bush. <laughs> <laughs> they were like you can't work here anymore and i was like okay goodbye katana <laughs> dreams <laughs> <laughs> so 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 you, you doing this um all these dance classes in school before you you had left um is this how you got into like choreography like doing choreography how, how, what was that journey like That's a very, very interesting journey, honestly, because in high school, like, I just loved dance. I was just like, oh, Mm -hmm. this is fun. You know, I was a part of the step team. And um, we had choreographers um, who've worked, like, who was, like, actually in tours and stuff, like, help us, like, choreograph our shows. And gave us like Broadway OG choreo for some things. So it was like very challenging for us as kids. So I was like, okay, I can get into this. And I was taking the dance classes at USF. And then I like left USF to come back home and start um, going to Broward College. Mm -hmm. And at that time I started, that's when I had my reflections of school. And I was like, I'm already like, you know, paying for these things, like, you know, doing private dance lessons and stuff like that. So I started taking, like, ballet classes and other classes. And when I came back, 
um, my old high school teacher was like, I'm doing Pippin. Can you choreograph this for me? I was like, mm. sure. And I started doing all my research and loved the choreography. And I was just like, oh my gosh, yes, yes. <laughs> and that like, that like gave me my first like itch. So then like other people were like, can you choreograph my show? And I would start doing that. And then I end up like, starting my own business and choreographing high school musicals. So yeah. like I've done a ton of like, you know, different shows, um, Spanish River High and West Palm or Boca, mm -hmm. Cooper City, Dillard, just like everywhere. Like, come to my high school. I was like, sure. <laughs> you are literally yeah. everywhere. Chore choreographing everything. Like every single style. Like you are you are like a madman with that kind of work. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's really incredible. Like, like uh, you, you did something at the the Wick uh, last year. Uh, damn, damn Yankees, correct? Yeah, damn Yankees. It, Ooh, I, that's I, a I big one. There. Yeah, and I was like, this is incredible. And then I like looked in the playbook. I was like, oh my god, Jarrell. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, it really was. Thank you, but yeah, um, I want to say. Was Tommy your first production, Kat? It was. It was my first professional production, yeah. And that was my first, like, um, like adult production of choreograph because I was just really? doing high schools yeah, at the time. Well, you kicked our asses. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still have, like, the pinball wizard, like, choreography, like, it permanently etched in my brain. Like, oh, the, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> like, just, oh, my God. It's, it's, it's just stuck in there. But I just, I just remember you being, like, so kind because I was just such a flailing idiot during that show. Like, <laughs> I just remember you being so kind, so nice to me because I was, I'm pretty sure I was the only like non dancer in that show. <laughs> so you really, it was just, it was such a joy. But yeah, no, no there was that. It seems like a fever dream sometimes. Like, yeah. I'm like, did that show really happen? <laughs> and then I see people who were in it and who like bring it up and I was like yeah that was a wild time Mallory yeah Mallory oh. Clay Victoria Mike Westbrook Aton Aton yeah 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 Sandy it was it you know it was yeah, crazy well, and it was like For Carol Carol was the musical director and and me and Carol, we already knew each other because she was the MD for the shows that I were choreographing at Spanish River. That's how I knew her. Ah, yeah. yeah, no, I let me just say that that show is a wild ex is experience because I think on day two, I they knew that I had done the show with Mallory like a, a year and a half prior, or something like that, and so. <laughs> This is so bad. Carol asked me, she's like, hey, would you be like the, um, will you be like the vocal captain? I, was just, I had never heard of like a vocal captain. I knew dance captain, but not a vocal captain. And I was like, oh yeah, sure. She was like, you know, just if people like when you're in rehearsals, they need to go over harmony parts, you can go over it with them. And I was like, yeah, sure. Cut to the next day. We we're supposed to have a dance rehearsal and, and they were like, oh, dance rehearsal is not going to happen. Um, it was supposed to be music rehearsal now. Carol's not there, so Kat, you're teaching harmonies. I went, hey. what? <laughs> this is like day two, day three. And I was like, excuse me, what? <laughs> and thank thank God Mallory jumped up because she's a far better like piano player than I am. But yeah, like literally, this is my first professional show, like first week. And they're like, Kat, you're in charge of this rehearsal excuse That's me wild. Like, the fuck <laughs> my yeah, first no. impression of you was like oh she seems so sweet I love her like I just uh -huh. remember like you being there and just being like receptive to everything I was saying you're like okay I'm gonna get it yeah okay 
<laughs> and then and then the theater world hardened her. <laughs> <laughs> I've just become a monster over the last few years. <laughs> and everyone's so, like, so, oh god. So real quick, speaking of first impressions, Jarrell, what what about me? What about you? What about you? So well, what's your first impression of this I idiot? Think, <laughs> I think um Mary Poppins was such a large cast. It, it was. was it was a large cast. And I was already just intimidated about the choreography. Mm -hmm. I was just like, You're oh my both. gosh, like this is gonna be the mouse. How can anything so, be more intimidating than us doing kinky boots with the treadmills? How can anything be that intimidating? <laughs> like and anything Original. more intimidating than that. <laughs> Original Broadway <laughs> choreo for Mary Poppins. That's how. Well, right there. I, I'm just saying, if you if you did, everybody say yeah. You wouldn't understand why we're why I'm saying. This. Girl, go go ahead and do step in time with a stage that if you fucking move just a little bit in the wrong way, you'll go flying. <laughs> we had to tape those tabs. <laughs> so, Jarrell, but you were Michael, talking, uh, I the, just it was intimidating. It was. I was. I mean, like, it was a large cast, and it was just like, all right, let's get to it. So everybody already had their, like, bonds of, like, people of, like, I know this person, let's bond up, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I just remember <laughs> you would always just, like, make, like, these side cracks. And I was like, oh, I like this one. <laughs> Because that's me too. I'm always saying something, you know, on the side, but I say more inappropriate things. And God bless. I think I probably said something very inappropriate and you went with it. And I was like, okay, he's my people. I know I know the exact moment this happened, Jarrell. We were learning the hands for Super Cal. And you said we it starts with S, and then you went S is for starfish. And I turned around, I went. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, oh, you don't know what starfish means. And I was like, well, teach me. And then you were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just where it blossomed. <laughs> just try to keep like a little ounce of professionalism. Like, no, I'm not going to go into this right now. <laughs> I was so I down for Jarrell's shit every single day like he he would go up to people before the shows and he'd be like hey can you just like bring me a playbill and I'm like oh maybe he just wants to look at the playbill <laughs> and he goes I see him sneak out of the dressing room and go grab scissors and he comes back in and he's cutting out people's headshots from the playbill and he's <laughs> sticking them in this book that he has to take on stage and he, it's incredible because he took this book and he was writing, you know, all these like very funny things in it. And to the point where like I'm cackling backstage. So I don't even want to know people's responses it's, when he was gets my on stage. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So when he'd go on, I'm waiting in the wings to make my entrance as Von Hustler. And all I could see is him just doing this like kind of side smile. And showing this book off, you know, as he's like, oh, look at this in here. I'm going to need to do work. But I know what's in that book, Jarrell. <laughs> <laughs> I know what was trying to happen. So I am a prankster. I am. I'm a little unprofessional, people. But <laughs> just when I know my show, when I know my show yeah. and I got it and it's now it's a long run and I'm not doing anything to distract. It's yeah. like, you know, us in the background just doing our peas and carrots. And like, if I have a prop, I'm going to use that prop. So I have a book. <laughs> There's going to be things in that book and you're going to look at it. Wait a minute. <laughs> I got to ask, what is what was your craziest prank that you did in a show? The craziest prank? Or your funniest prank? I think just throw punching people. <laughs> I I love to throw punch people. And Can you explain just... what it is though? Because people are going to actually think that you suck people in the throat when it's not a, like a a full on throat punch. You know, I just ball up my fist a little, 
and I just do like a little soft little it's very soft but I always put a little sound effect with it I'm like psh, psh. <laughs> but the thing is people always get caught off guard about the throat punch so that's the whole the response to it they're like like did you just throat punch me <laughs> like yes <laughs> So when you throw punch like somebody the... in the show, <laughs> and then he, he got me back, so like... good. He got me so good in Step in Time. It was the slow motion part, uh, right before Bert flies. So we do, you know, brushes, brooms, and brushes, brooms, and rods, and then we all drop and we go into this slow mo sequence as we all watch Bert. And I see Jarrell out of the le- like the left hand like corner coming at me, and I'm like. Oh, this is new blocking. And he's, <laughs> he's scooting on by. And in slow mo, I see his little balled up fist <laughs> come right at me. And it taps me in slow mo in the throat. And he gives me a slow mo sound effect as well. He just goes, shh. <laughs> and then he, he continues his track. And I was flabbergasted for the rest of the number. I didn't know how to handle myself because that was my first punch. It was an honor, and it was in like this like special part of the show. So I was like, "Oh, so this is what it feels like." <laughs> you know, I have just... my usual suspects, and then people are like, "When are you gonna throw a punch me?" And I'm like, "Y'all know," <laughs> and they never know. <laughs> this, oh my god, throw up punches, and I I remember Kinky Bits people doing the blow darts the. <laughs> Yeah, especially like right before the curtain went up for every everybody say yeah, and we're all standing back there. It was like the perfect time for everyone to get like pranked and harassed, and then everyone has to like freeze and like as soon as the light comes through the curtain. Oh my god! So question, question for you, Jarrell, real quick. Mm -hmm. So when did you get promoted to HR? Oh, that's a funny story. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm a very inappropriate person. Like, but I, I'm, I only say these things like, you know, softly, and just yeah. like if you're an earshot away, or if you're somebody I'm comfortable with, you hear it. So. I just remember, like, when people would say inappropriate things, I would always yell HR. I would use, like, HR! HR! And never HR? got a response. Never got a response. So I was like, well, since HR is never around, I will be HR. <laughs> <laughs> and it helps me get away with inappropriate things. Because people will say inappropriate things. I'm like, you can't say that. I'm ready to give up. <laughs> but then I we would say something. Yep. I would say something and they were like, HR? And I'm like, who are you going to tell? <laughs> I'm the entire department. <laughs> I, I made it's it my throughout loophole. all... Yes, I, I made it throughout <laughs> all of Mary Poppins without getting a, a post-it note stuck on my mirror in the dressing room. And I was so proud of it. And then we get to Newsies and we're like in the last weekend. And I was like, two shows and I'm, no write-up from Jarrell? Are you serious? I'm killing it right now. And during Seize the Day, I was like feeling it that night. And as, you know, the policeman back there, I was giving a good twerk. Like I was busting down back there. And all I see, because I start, I start twerking and I'm laughing and Jeffrey's eyes are like massive. And I'm like, what? And I'm like turning around expecting there to be like this police force, like just ready to arrest me for twerking to seize the day. And I turn around and Jarrell has a post-it note ready. And he takes out his little clicky pen and you hear the like the little, and then he goes ahead and he starts writing it. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Cause like, I'm just like, I almost got through it. Right, and he he runs back there and he sticks it on my mirror, and it was like the world ended. <laughs> and he was doing it apparently to all the newsy boys back there. So, closing night, they all when Jarrell went on, they all came up to me and they were like, "Where are his post its?" And I'm like, "No, I'm like, I'm not gonna get in trouble for this. He's gonna kill me." I sit like two seats away from him, and they were like, 
where are the post-its? And there was like all of them back there because it was a scene where the Newsies were just not needed. And they literally scoured his entire station, found his stack of post-its, grabbed multiple pens, filled all, <laughs> you know, filled out all of these things and littered his mirror. Like littered. I have pictures and I have a video and we're going to put I, it I just, in. I, yeah, we'll put the video in right now. What a <laughs> Who said that? Who said that? Who did 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 so when he got back, as you saw in this video, Jarrell, <laughs> he went this, ape this shit. shit. And the, the funniest thing is he he went into the, the dressing room for the Newsy Boys to go find them and throat punch them all. But they were all on stage. They timed it perfectly to the point where he got off and they all went on. So he was stuck back there looking to hit someone. And, you know, I was just videotaping <laughs> following him. And the video ends when he throat punches me. It, it was. <laughs> he had to get I was like the new the newsies unionized against HR. It was a first. <laughs> like there has been times like Sean Davis tried to overthrow HR once. What did he do? I want to say it was during Groundhog's Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love Sean Davis. He was like. HR and he was against it and he tried to like disband it and I want to say he like made his own department <laughs> it was something silly like the something committee or <laughs> I don't know <laughs> but it didn't go end well because HR always ends in victorious Jarell yeah. always wins yes <laughs> <laughs> Oh my but God. that's another joke, HR. That's just, and it just became a thing where like people are always like HR, and I'm like, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> it's an iconic role of yours. Iconic role. Yeah. Other than that role, what what is your favorite role that you've done so far? Oh, oh, I would say Michael and Tick Tick Boom. Oh, it's it's something that I would really love to do again. Yeah, because I was young when I did it, and now I have some history and story and experience. I'm like, ooh, let me tell that again. Now I'm actually thirty. But yeah, got it. Not yeah, enough no. love for Tick Tick Boom nowadays. Not enough love. I'm. I was hoping with like the the movie that like you know we'd get we get m more performances of it regionally we'd get we get to see more of it and it is happening just like not as much as i hoped yeah it's but people love show. rent rent yeah. sells <laughs> yeah rent sells not so much the better show Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> we're gonna be getting some comments Ooh. because of that it's okay <laughs> because i'm a rent head like that was like a musical that I grew up with. And I was like, oh my yeah. gosh, I want to do this show. And for the longest time, Tom Collins was like a bucket, you know, role. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, Tom Collins. And now I'm old and jaded. And I'm like, mm -mm, I want to be Benny. <laughs> I'm like, y'all need to pay the rent. Stop playing around. <laughs> Stop playing around. I get it. Now, is that one of your dream shows? Is that one of your dream shows, Jarrell? It is. I've never done Rent. I've choreographed it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just one of those shows that I've I've missed out. Or I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, I missed out on this. So mm. I don't I th I think I think it'll still happen. I feel like yeah. I feel like this is the time for like rent to like kind of pull back and then it's going to come back again. You know, it's going to, it's going to have like a, a solid revival, you know? Mm -hmm. I think, I think, I think so.
At least that's me. I feel like that's kind of happening with Kinky Boots. I think Kinky Boots is kind of like pulling back now. And then like it'll have like a really good revival, you know. Right. I want to see something line. fresh and new. But it's th- it's the thing now it's like a dated piece because it's all 90s references. Well, that's wh- that's why you got to wait a little bit so you can become even more dated and then you're like it's a period piece. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was in the 90s like i was born in the 90s jesus christ i'm vintage now cool 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 <laughs> so, wait uh so jarell now question do you prefer virtual auditions or in-person auditions both okay so, and do you have any horror in stories? a sense of like i like in a sense of like submitting virtually and then coming in for like a callback yeah. Got it. Fair. You know what I mean? It's like or sending sending, you know, material of what you you've done and then they're like, okay, come on in. Or yeah. call Got back. It. But I also like in person auditions as well. It, I'm just saying I like virtual if you can't make it in person. Yeah. Got it. I I think I think we now since like post COVID, I think it's just it's made it a lot easier where you don't have to sit through like hours and hours of waiting, you know, to get seen. Especially like if you if you're non union and stuff, you could be waiting for five fucking hours for even like a regional house to get seen for that shit. So like when when they're willing to take like like self tapes and then you can go in for a callback, it just makes it so much easier. And like you know they've they've whittled it down. And like they're taking you seriously, you know. It's, I just yeah. think it's easier. But audition horror stories, we've all got them. Tell yeah, me some of one. yours. <laughs> oh my gosh! So, I would say I was twenty years old, mm-hmm. and I was in Chicago at the time. Um. I was staying in Chicago, living in my brother's apartment, who just went abroad to study abroad. So I was staying in his apartment for the year. And I was, I was like, you know, anxious and like ready to do theater. Mm -hmm. And I noticed like a lot of like, you know, auditions were coming through in Chicago for like the tours and things. And it wasn't hard to be seen at all in the Chicago audition. Unlike New York, you're like waking up four in the morning, signing some fake list off of a composition <laughs> notebook paper. And... It was unofficial list. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I was watching a TikTok and apparently someone stole the unofficial list and like they moved to a different, like, different, like, a room or something. I, I, the the other pearl it was just like y'all children yeah. y- you're so invested in that tiny piece of like notebook paper right but in chicago <laughs> that wasn't really a problem so i was going in for all these new tours at the time um catch me if you can was just going on tour mm. um and i remember going in for the color purple i was trying to go in for the singer's call and they were like oh this is full but come to the dancer's call we can see you after and i was (laughs) like okay so i went into the dancer's call for the color purple and at that time i wasn't as a seasoned dancer Mm. (laughs) like i was just 20 years old and they had live drummers in the room and they were like, okay, we're going to do this piece um, based on the choreographer's, like, works in the past. And it was this ballet combination, but set to African drums. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I thought this was color purple. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I want to do a little Charleston, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sugar Avery. I'm like, wait, what? And I I just remember being in this room with, like, all these, like, beautiful, like, 
Alvin Ailey like dancers mm-hmm. and they're just killing it. They're just and I'm in the back and I'm like, <laughs> what am I doing in here? I wanted to sing. And I just remember the choreographer at one point, she was like, you there in the back. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, you okay? And I was like, yeah, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And she was like, no, come up here. And I was like, no, I'm good. And she literally walks <laughs> to the back of the room, grabs me by my arm and pulls me front and center. And she's like finishing the combination. I'm there and I'm like, oh my goodness. And they were like, all right, let's split it up. You know, we do our groups. And I just happened to be in this group of three instead of four. And she made me the center of uh, the formation front and back. And I just remember just like faking my way. Mm -hmm. Just like, ah, ah. Just like, just doing whatever I can and just killing the last four count. Like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And just sauntering to the side and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is probably the worst thing I've ever done in my entire life. And I just remember they're like calling numbers. Obviously my number wasn't called. And she walks over and she's like, Jarrell, right? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, do you have any ballet training? And I was like, no, girl. No. And she was like, do she was like, get into some ballet classes and then like come back. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. And I walked out and I was like, oh my gosh, that was wild. And <laughs> that that was probably it because like I looked like a fool. <laughs> no, I, I just had something kind of similar. So I got called in for um, a a uh, I- I emergency replacement for the international tour. So I go into the city, you know, I did my rounds virtually and they were like, come up. And my fucking bus was almost an hour late. It was like 40 minutes late. And I'm like messaging that, like casting to you. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm coming late. Like I'm on my way and I'm getting no response. I'm like horrified. I'm like running over to Ripley Greer. And so they're already singing people. They've finished the, they have finished the dance call at that point because they were dancing people, making a cut, and then moving on to vocals. And so they, I, I go in. They're on. A, they, they were like on a five or whatever. I poke, poke my head. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And they're like, No worries, cat. We're gonna see you at the end. And I was like, Okay. So then it gets down to like the final five girls and. I'm singing and and acting the material and like I'm getting great feedback. And like, I had, I had just gotten over COVID. Like, I think I tested negative, like the day prior, I was still fucking sick of shit. So I do, I do the songs. I do the, I do the acting stuff. And then the choreographer goes, so are you cool to dance now? I'm not in dance attire. It was raining. You know, I am, I am looking a little bit of a hot mess at this moment. And I was, you know, cause you're an actor. I was like, yeah, totally. <laughs> so they started and of course what i didn't realize is during the dance call they were having people singing the 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 cut while they were dancing it and they kind of gave me a general idea of the choreo they sent us a video prior but then there were changes in the room so he's he's goes over with me once and he's making me sing full out as he's like teaching me the choreo so listen i'm not a petite little flower i'm I'm a big lady (laughs) let me just be I'm a singer actor standard you know so (laughs) he's letting me sing it full out as he's teaching me the choreo (laughs) and then he's like okay let's do it away from the mirror let's do it away from the mirror like full out do it again and then he was like no breaks and then he's like okay so we're gonna record it now and you'll do it facing like the facing the 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 casting team and of course i'm huffing and puffing sick as fuck still recovering from covid as i'm like trying to do this choreo and so i finish it and i was like well i'm not getting hired you know and i dip out and then i get a call from casting i guess like 15 minutes after and they were they were like hey cat so we just wanted to like call you and i was like yeah thinking like it's a positive thing i was like oh wow maybe i did something right so they call me and they're like cat you know we're just 
we're looking at you and like we're thinking like she is a home run but your dance do you think you have the stamina to do this ain't shows a week i'm like yeah like i've i've been doing this for years like and I didn't want to be like, I'm sick as fuck. I didn't want to be that person. Oh, I would have been that person. I would have thrown that right out there immediately. <laughs> but, but, the, but so, so they're like, so like, can, can you send us more like dance footage? And so like, I send them footage of me like in kinky boots, like the multiple iterations at this point. And I'm like, I can do it. I, I swear. And they were like, you were worth waiting for. No hire. <laughs> I haven't had like any crazy like horror dance audition story. I I mean I did the uh the chorus line call at LPAC, uh, you know, for the callbacks. And everyone knows the chorus line choreo. It's iconic. Okay, you can't like mess it up. And, and you know, but before oh, they can had all mess the music... it up. Plenty of people can mess it up. <laughs> oh, I know, but like, you know, <laughs> if, if it's this important and you're getting called back, like do your best. <laughs> you know? Like Yeah, yeah. Right. So we, we get into the room and they, they immediately have the Newsies people do the ballet combination, right? <laughs> and I'm I'm not a ballet guy, <laughs> okay? I'm very heavy-footed when it comes to ballet, but, you know, like, with the other stuff, I can keep up. So, like, ballet, it went all right. I hit a tour jeté. I was very proud of myself. My basketball thighs got me up and off the ground, and it looked it felt pretty. I don't know if it looked pretty. I got a cousin named tour jeté. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! I'm gonna lose my fucking train of thought. Son of a bitch. So, Torjete. That's what I'm. Torjete with Jarrell Brown. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> so you know, I do, I do that, and I walk out, and I'm like, okay, I'm not super winded. Like I'm like, all right, that went swimmingly so far. So they call us back into the room, and they teach us the opening number because, of course, and you know, I am fucking it up. I'm like, why is my body not working? What what is going on? My legs, ah, like everything is going wrong. And I'm like, okay, Michael, pull it the fuck together. And they're like, all right, we're going to separate it into groups of three. And I went, are you fucking shitting me? Okay, all right, fuck. Right? And I'm like having this panic attack in the corner. I'm like, I don't want to do it with just two other people. And they're going to make us switch lines. <laughs> Look, I'm not ready for this. So we do it the first time and I'm everything clicks. And I was like, holy shit. Like, even the turn, turn out in, you know, like, that sh- I hit a double for, like, the first time in, like, six years. And I was like, holy shit. And then, like, after we got done, I just forgot to breathe. Because I was so, like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. And I was like, <gasps> <gasps> right? And then they're like, okay, no breaks. Again. <laughs> and I went, huh? And that second run through, I think I did a Hail Mary. Like, it was like, I did the sign of the cross. And I did a silent prayer in my mind. And I just was like, please let me get through this number. Please. It's it's an insane number. And I, I got through it and I, I was like, great. When am I reading? And they're like, oh, okay, take your sides and go out. And I went, do I have time to go fucking dry heave? <laughs> am I good to go? So when I found out I got a cut dancer in the show, I was like, oh, perfect. I could do the opening number without breathing, and then I can go and dry heave off stage. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you know, I'm I'm hitting the gym. It was I, I did that when I was doing Teddy Roosevelt, and I was a lazy sack of shit, like, with Teddy Roosevelt. Because, like, he's a heavier set guy, so I'm not trying to look like skinny Teddy. I wanted to fit the character, so I'm going to give myself props. So, you know, going into that call is fat Teddy Roosevelt. All the newsies were like, okay, Mr. President. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, like, I'm gonna go throw up. But now, oh, now so I'm you're method. Oh yeah, method. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But you know, I'm I'm now in shape and I'm I'm ready to do the show, which is a great feeling. Like the stamina is there and everything's fine. But that was definitely like I felt very lightheaded after that call, and I was like, reality check. Go to the gym. So I I have to ask this because this is this is less theater related, but. Jarrell, how did you become so damn funny? Because your videos that you make crack me mm-hmm. the fuck up. The the nope. lip syncing videos that you have made over the years. Um, how many wigs do you have for all these videos? <laughs> <laughs> I have a ton of wigs. 
Um, they're all in storage. I actually have not a single piece of hair in my house <gasps> right now. Oh, but, it's not right. Um, <laughs> so that's a funny story because I was actually living in Japan at the time. I was under contract in Universal Studios. Mm-hmm. And they always have like this cabaret night um, in Japan with like all the performers in the park. And they just like hosted like the show where they would like sing and dance, you know, stuff that didn't have to do with the park, you know, showing off everybody's talents. And I was like, I'm going to make fun of the the shows at our at our park so like i literally got some wigs started had a friend his name was sean and he just like filmed me and i started like poking fun of like the shows at universal and they like showed it at the artist night and since it was like relatable and everybody knew what the shows were i was just like ah, and all like the super fans are there too who like go to the park every day. So and you know, there was no language. It was just like <laughs> like a Charlie Chaplin kind of style, like I never spoke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I remember like my casting director was like, Hey, can you stop? <laughs> <laughs> because i was like putting them up on youtube and things and like i was legit like poking fun of the shows and they were like can you stop that like like they have face characters there yeah they have face characters there like i dressed up as marilyn monroe and fiona from shrek but not as an ogre and i would literally just like walk the streets of Japan, like as these characters, like and get honest reactions from like Japanese people, and they're like, ah, and they were like, fuck with them, and that became a thing. And then I just started doing musicals. Michael, I sent you the Into the Woods. Like mm-hmm. that was like 2015. I did those things. <laughs> yep. Because I, I'm, you know, at my station and I'm getting ready and I just see, you know, Jarrell Brown at the opening. And I was like, oh, that's really nice. And then it said, see attachment. And I clicked on that attachment. And all I see is him right in the beginning as all the stepsisters, the stepmother and Cinderella. And it gave me the energy I needed <laughs> to just <laughs> pound out a show. It was absolutely incredible. You you were a person that's like so like tailor made for like things like TikTok. I'm so glad. What are you like? You're like almost at like 10k at this point, right? Yeah, but I haven't like really produced any content, and people are always like, "When are you gonna put out more content? When are you gonna do things?" And I'm like, oh, I just the wigs. When I get my wigs out of storage, <laughs> let me get them out of storage. <laughs> Of like the wigs, they're their own characters. And... We're gonna set set up a GoFundMe for wigs. <laughs> <laughs> and my it, it was <laughs> it was like that was something I was like very like invested in. I was like, oh, I'm gonna like do these shows, and like I started like doing all the shows that I've been involved in, and you know, people just start throwing wigs at me. They're like, take this wig take this and give any costumes like i know casey sacco she gave me a few nightgowns i'm like thanks and i use them as costumes and and, you know like it was fun for me because i was like doing the bare minimum i would just literally put on a wig and a shirt on backwards wouldn't shave (laughs) like this is it (laughs) full beard and all (laughs) use your imagination people I think the low commitment makes the bits funnier. Yeah. And that's what I appreciate about them. Because seeing Cinderella's stepmother with a full-grown beard yelling at Cinderella. <laughs> and it flips to you just in the same wig, but a different kind of like top. It's, it's <laughs> like, the per- this it's, is it's, what I needed. It's the perfect amount of commitment. Because it's not, you know, like a t-shirt or like a towel on the head as the wig. You have the wig. Is the wig brushed? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it's not. <laughs> 
I found myself like the wigs would literally take me over. I became like a Muppet. Like that's how I feel when I'm in those wigs. I just feel like a giant Muppet. And, you know, I had fun with it. And then this was before TikTok. Then when TikTok came, I just started making them. And I was like, ah. And during the pandemic, I was like, well, I have nothing but free time. And I've already had ideas and things that I wanted to do. And that's when I made my Hamilton um, parody on brunch. And that was something that I wrote in 2014 and like years later I was like well I've had this in my notes forever why don't I just do it yeah mm-hmm. oh my goodness can you give us your like if you're cool with it are your social so people can go follow you go see your tiktoks go you know yeah en- enjoy um... enjoy everything <laughs> people need to go ahead and experience what true art is by looking at his tiktoks yes yeah. The I'm Spice World one content. got me good today. Oh. <laughs> that one popped up on my feed just out of nowhere, and I was like, Ugh. yeah. Really? That's interesting, because I have seen people have been liking old videos, and I'm like, is this pushing out again? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I want to say my TikTok is Jarrell Brown 1. Mm-hmm. I might be lying. I'll fix and, it if it's not. <laughs> and then my Instagram is Jarrell Brown 7. Ooh. I guess there's oh. six other me's out there who got my name. None of them compare to you. Nothing not even close. compares to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jarrell, we are coming up on an hour. We appreciate you coming on. This was such like a blast, and I love seeing your face again. Even though the audience won't, I did. So, ha ha, eat it. Uh, I, you know, I hope that we get to do more stuff together soon because I miss my starfish, uh, oh. and I miss all the hijinks that we go ahead and we we you know put together uh, on stage, and uh, just having your your very positive you know self loving presence in a room is something that. I think is needed. Um, so I, I hope to be working again with you very soon, buddy. And now oh, after, after people listening to this podcast, all the casting teams are like, okay, we got to make sure that we keep the three of them away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people should already know that uh, I'm a little mischievous. Every, every <laughs> time people hear my laugh, they're like, oh, you have a villain laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready. (laughs) I'm always up to something. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. We love you you bunches. Love you guys. And much success to the pod. Thank Thank you. you, (laughs) All right. So wrapping it up real quick. uh, Non-Ec Nonsense premieres uh, every Monday. Uh, so go ahead and, and tune in to us and expect us to be on your dark days so you can go ahead and give us a listen. Uh, I am Michael Matterdomini. I am Kat Gold. And this is Jarrell Brown. Hey! <laughs> and thank you for tuning into non Egg Nonsense. We will see you on Mondays. Have a good one. Stay healthy. No COVID. Oh. <laughs>